Well, a game changer on the near west side of downtown Indianapolis is Elanco Animal Health broke ground this week on its $100 million global headquarters at the old GM stamping plant site. For some perspective on that big story and other business news around the state, pleased to be joined by our panel of insiders this week. Victor Smith is chair of the site selection uh, practice group at Bose McKinney and Evans. Also, we have Steve Appel, who's vice president at Gregory and Appel, and Portia Bailey Bernard, who is vice president, Indianapolis Economic Development uh, here in Indianapolis. And thank you one and all for being on The Insiders. And we begin with kind of the big story, I guess, of the week. And Victor, uh, in uh, terms of uh, getting it out front to you, uh, Lanka was a client of yours, so you worked, you have that relationship. But I'll begin with you. Uh, $100 million corporate campus, a lot of uh, elements to this story. Uh, related to Elanco, related to Indianapolis, mm -hmm. Indiana. Put in perspective, in your view, how, how substantial, how big is this announcement? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a major announcement, uh, Gary. Um, you know, Jeff Simmons is really a visionary. Um, you know, at the groundbreaking, he talked about the building as not as a noun, but as a verb, because he's building something. And what they're building is not only the first post-COVID uh, headquarters destination for their employees, uh, but they're building a, a um, they're building a whole new momentum of, of innovation uh, for their for their clients and for their customers for vets for pet owners, um, and I think this also is the the follow on, is it's going to be drawing all kinds of new technologies and new companies and spin offs including the biomedic that just spun off on mm -hmm. Monday Aaron Schacht yeah. who was formerly with Elanco I think that's just indicative of of a new center of gravity for the animal health world. Yeah, and, and Portia, I know the Indy Chamber responded right initially to the the, the RFP on the, the, this deal. So you've seen it up, up close and personal as you look at the impact, big for Elanco, obviously, but how about for Indianapolis? How about for downtown Indianapolis, extending really across the White River? I mean, this is huge. As you all know, that uh, the former GM stamping plant has remained vacant for 11 years mm -hmm. now. So the city, the state, the community, we've been waiting for something to happen. I mean, th the investment that Elanco is going to make is just tremendous. They're bringing a thousand high paying jobs to our community. And with that, to the public infrastructure improvements that the city will be making and connecting downtown in, in Elanco via a bridge a Henry, mm -hmm. by Henry Street that will serve not only pedestrians but vehicles as well. There's also going to be the expansion of White River State Park, which is all part of the White River Vision Plan. So this is tremendous for the city and yeah. tremendous for the state. Yeah, Steve, your take uh, on this and uh, how substantial it can be lo longer term for Indianapolis and central Indiana. Well, when I think of like major cities, one of the besides how many pro sports teams do you have is how many corporate headquarters mm -hmm. do you have. And the, as Portia mentioned, the uh, the corporate talent, the, what it has effect on real estate, uh, local schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just it's a very exciting and Elanco is kind of a, a little bit under the radar now, I think locally, but I, I project in the future, it'll be kind of like Lilly and Salesforce and Elanco will be more roll off the tongues of local people. Yeah. Last thing I'd say too is that, you know, it brings the Valley neighborhood um, mm -hmm. and ignites that whole sure. that whole west side of the, of the of the water. The other thing is, don't forget, there's 45 acres left on that campus that hasn't been yet developed. And yeah. I know that that's going to ignite a lot of interest in, in drawing other companies, yeah. maybe other corporate headquarters there as well. How about this whole concept in uh, um, Jeff Simmons talked a little bit about it, the Silicon Valley of animal health and creating, you know, from Purdue down here and south when you look at Corteva, Elanco, obviously, and, the, you know, the assets that are here now and creating something that can, can be a recognized area is like Silicon Valley or Research Triangle Park here in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that's true. And, and um, again, the first the first evidence of that we've seen is the Biomedit um, mm -hmm. spinoff. I know Scott Dorsey and his group are, are scratching their heads and working together with with Agronovis and with some of the other folks, the leadership at Elanco, to see how what what can we do to continue to draw yeah. to draw that that technology here to, to to claim this as the new epicenter of animal health in the world. Yeah. And if you think Purdue can also with their other agricultural ties too, mm -hmm. it's just a lot of yeah. fits for Indiana. Well, a lot of assets mm -hmm. in place. Uh, we held uh, inside Indiana business and the IBJ our first engage Indiana event outside of Central Indiana. This one this week in Evansville, a crowd of 350 people, uh, business community leaders, big. Panel discussion talking about big issues in the region. You know how they are dealing with those uh, the, with those issues. One issue is the loss 
of air service. And, and Porsche, I'd start off with you on this, but they've lost, Evansville has lost air service to Chicago and Detroit, two really important markets, especially for them of the companies they have down there. How important is that? And what can be done to, you know, to kind of, you know, get the service back working with, uh, you know, local entities? Yeah, I mean, we work closely with the Indianapolis International Airport. And I, I mean, COVID took a tremendous hit on the airline industry. And business travel was such a key component to it. And what really is going to help travel get back is companies getting comfortable traveling again. So we're starting to see restrictions lift and, and employers are allowing their employees to, to travel. I think that's going to really start getting us going in the right direction in terms of picking up air, air service again. Yeah, and, and connectivity is, is so important, as you know, not only for the business community, but but for the for the city itself. I think, um, you know, if you remember just a few years back, um, the IEDC began to get in that space a little bit when it, when it attracted the nonstop San Francisco flights mm -hmm. to Indianapolis. I think the IDC um, tools. I have, I have faith in the in, in Brad and his leadership and in the governor that they're probably already having those conversations to see what it is that they can do in a post-COVID world when when things come back when the, mm -hmm. when the industry comes back. What we can do to make sure that that services is, is, is brought back. Another story this week, uh, the continued expansion of health care uh, really throughout Indiana, but here in central Indiana, IU Health announcing plans to really dramatically grow its footprint in Fishers at the uh, the Saxony development, changing the name to IU uh, Health Fishers and increasing uh, the em employment there, 50%, uh, $287 million investment, so a lot of money. Of course, they're building essentially, what, one or two new hospitals in downtown Indianapolis as well. So. Well, full disclosure, Gregory and Appel's office is literally in ground zero of their 1.6 <laughs> yeah, billion right, expansion right. right now. So it sort of looks almost like a war zone in a good yeah, way. Yeah. Uh, but the Fishers is growing so much that it makes sense that there's probably a need out there. And uh, I do just I will chuckle though with 287 out there and 1.6 here is a lot of money in healthcare, isn't there? There is a lot of money. <laughs> yes, good for the construction uh, folks uh, as well. A uh, couple of uh, uh, moves of note, if you will, on the personnel side, uh, and that there's a new uh, leadership uh, leadership change, a new president at Indiana Black Expo, all, also a new head at Tech Point. Uh, Portia, I'll start with you. Alice Watson taking over at Black Expo. Talk about first of all the importance of that organization, uh, but also this leadership change. I mean, this is great. IBE serves the community and they just do so much in terms of education and economic advancement. Tanya's done a great job in laying the groundwork and really building a strong foundation for IBE. But new leadership is exciting. With that comes new ideas and innovative changes. I have some of my greatest memories attending summer mm -hmm. celebration and I feel like a lot of people don't realize, but Every year, the summer celebration brings 100,000 visitors to Indianapolis, which generates roughly $11.6 million in economic activity, yeah. which is just amazing. I'm also pumped because the free concert is actually coming back downtown this year, and the queen, the legend herself, Miss Patti LaBelle, is headlining this year. So you will see me there. But congratulations to Alice Watson. I yeah. wish her nothing but the best yeah. in continuing the great work that IBE does. Yeah, and as you say, this is an important year it for is. Bl Black Expo, Expo because folks are coming back yes. downtown, which yes. is great. Uh, also on the technology side, uh, I'll throw it to you on this, Victor. Tim Goody, mm -hmm. been at Elevate Ventures, involved yeah. in the, the venture world here, certainly is the new CEO taking over for Mike Langelier, who's yeah. led the organization for a number of years. What, what a great call. I mean, I've known Ting for a decade, mm -hmm. um, had the great pleasure, privilege of working with her when she was at Elevate for so long. Um, we traveled internationally trying to chase companies together and as part of a delegation. So um, clearly capable, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect fit for mm -hmm. so many reasons. Um, so Godspeed to her, that's a, it's a great match. Yeah, hey, what, one other uh, interesting, a mixed use development uh, that was announced, uh, and those happen all the time. This one though in Tipton County, uh, just off US 31. Uh, so some of these smaller communities uh, are, are really uh, connecting with mixed use development, housing developments, housing such a big issue around uh, the state of Indiana. I think it's a good trend that you're seeing because of what one 
possibly positive of COVID is you can live anywhere potentially mm -hmm. and do your job. And so some people are looking to get out of the cities mm -hmm. and have a little more space. And that might be a new trend that Indiana yeah. could also capitalize on. Okay, we always like to try to end up on something sports or sports related. Sports books continue to do very well. Obviously March Madness, uh, a big chunk of that, but uh, 400 and almost $500 million in wagering at the sports books. It's hard, as a 50% year over year growth, yeah. which, uh, uh, with it being available on your phone, it's kind of dangerous for yeah. many out there. But yeah. uh, it, 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 the demand it, was clearly there. Is it really there. available on your phone? <laughs> <laughs> Victor, I'll give you the last word. What do you think of the sports books? I mean, it, it, Indiana was one of the leaders, too, it, one of the that's first right. states well, to. That's right. Well, you know, it, it, it brings an industry that was kind of a black market industry into the light. So yeah. from a, con a consumer protection standpoint, I think there's probably some positive things that go along with that. And let's not look beyond the state revenue additions. I mean, that's, yeah. it provides the state with so many different additional resources. Right. to do good, I hope. Very good. Victor mm -hmm. Smith, Portia Bailey Bernard, Steve Appel, thank you one and all for being on The Insiders. Thanks. Thank you. And we'll Thanks, be Jerry. back right after this.